In this video, we're going to be painting Azrael, Master of the Dark Angels, and we're going to be breaking it down to a lot of simple steps to get all that detail done and the model looking as close to the box art as we can. Let's get painting. Now, the first thing I've done is primed the model with Zandri dust. Now, you might think that's a little unusual, but it's going to make painting those robes a lot easier later on, and it's easier to paint the darker colours over the light colours than spend ages putting extra coats of light colour over dark. The first thing we're going to do is base all of the armour. So we're going to do that with a 50-50 mix of Caliban green and Abaddon black. So this is going to be a really, really dark green. So we're going to paint this over all the armour panels. Don't forget the backpack as well. And any green bits on the banner. And that's something to point out. Every time I use colours on the marine body itself, I'm going to use the same equivalent colours on that back banner where I need to. Next up, we'll block in all of the black parts. Now, I'm going to use AK 3rd Gen Black for this because it just covers in one coat. Abaddon black does need a couple of coats uh, to get that coverage on there. So I'm just making sure to go around being careful not to spill this in any areas where I'm going to be painting lighter colours later on. We'll base that undercloth next and the colour we'll use that is Scream of Pink. Now this is a kind of cross between purple and pink but I think it works really nicely with the other colours that we'll be putting onto this Dark Angel. We'll shade all of that using Drakenhof Nightshade. Now we're not going to flood the area with this, we're just going to paint it into those recesses because we want to have a fairly smooth transition across the folds of this underskirt. When that's dry, we'll take a 50-50 mix of Screamer Pink and Pink Horror and we'll use this to highlight that underskirt. Now we're looking to catch the most raised folds, but also where we've got large areas visible, we're going to paint that as well. We just want to try and feather it a little bit as well, just to smooth those edges. And that's the reason we're using a mix of paint here, rather than just Pink Horror, which on its own probably will be too bright. We'll finish those highlights using Pure Pink Horror and we're looking to just catch the most raised folds making sure we've got a nice tight thin line on there and this will just really help accentuate these folds of the underskirt because don't forget this is going to be underneath the rest of Azrael's body and there's lots of other bits and pieces going on so we don't want to have it too bright and taking away from the other detail we can move on to painting the gold next and the color we're going to base everything with is retributor armor now this will go over that zandri dust base coat really nicely and it'll cover in just one coat even if you thin it with a little bit of water like i've done here so in terms of what we're painting, there's not a huge amount of gold details on Azrael. There's things like his uh, sword hilt. There's things like the edges of his uh, banner pole. So there's not too much. Just check the box out if you're not sure what bits you need to paint. We'll then shade all of that gold using Reichland Flesh Shade. Now, you don't want to flood this too much. You just want to get it in the recesses. However, it will flow over that metallic paint fairly nicely. So make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. Just paint it over those areas you've just based gold. We'll paint all of the leather next, and the colour we're going to use this is Garagax Sewer Contrast Paint. This is a really nice dark browny colour, but because it's contrast and it's going over Xandri Dust, it'll actually just give you those natural highlights as well as filling those shadows in. So if you need to fix any Xandri Dust bits you may have painted over, do that, and then just pop some Garagax Sewer over everything. And this will work really well on the belt as well, which has got quite a lot of metallic detail on it, but this will get into those recesses and it'll be a really quick, easy job to paint the leather. We'll base all of the silver next, and the colour I'm using of this is Dark Aluminium from Vallejo Metal Colour. If you haven't got this, you can use Lead Belcher or any dark metal, really. I'm going to make sure I've got nice, even coverage of this, so part of the uh, Combi Bolter, the Power Sword as well, and that Banner Pole, as well as some of the smaller details, such as the uh, Crux Terminatus detail all along that belt. I'm going to use the same shade on the silver that I'm going to use on all of the red areas. So I'm now going to take some Mephiston red and use this to paint over the casing of the weapon. Again, because it's going over that Xandri dust, it'll do one coat coverage, no problem. I'm also going to base all of the wax on the purity seals with red and also the framing of the banner. Don't forget, everything that I'm painting on the Space Marine model, I'm using exactly the same colours on the banner. So just reference the box art if you're not sure what colour goes where. With all that red done, it's now time to wash all of the silver metallics and all of that red. And the colour I'm use this is Null Oil. Now, it's really important that you don't flood the area too much. Just work it into those recesses to give you a nice bit of shadow. Because that will make it easier to come back later, brighten up and highlight some of these areas. So it's a nice easy step. Again, you're just covering over all those parts you've just finished in the last couple of steps. 
it's time to highlight all of the metals next and we'll start with the gold so to highlight that we're going to take some liberator gold which is a nice bright gold if you haven't got liberator gold just mix a tiny bit of silver into your retribute armor that'll lighten it up so we're looking to just catch all the edges of all the raised detail that'll give us a nice tight highlight which will really help accentuate and really catch the light when this model is on the tabletop We'll then use Chrome from Vallejo Model Air. If you haven't got this, then you can use Stormhost Silver. I'm going to use this exactly the same way as we did the Liberator Gold. We're just looking to catch those raised edges and the parts of the model that are catching the most light. Make sure you use the tip of the brush and drag it along any hard edges that you may have on the model, as this will really help you get a nice, sharp highlight. Now, on the box art, you'll see that there's some really nice transitions along Azrael's blade. We're not going to do them quite exactly the same, but we are going to do a little bit of wet blending with the metallic. So the first thing we're going to do is pop a little bit of chrome down on part of the blade, and then we're going to take a little bit of that dark aluminium and paint that over the same area. We'll then clean our brush off completely whilst our paint is still wet. We're just going to blend the dark aluminium down so that it actually leaves a fairly decent transition into that chrome. So we're going to do this at the top right hand side of the blade like i've done here we're going to do it on the opposite side of the other side of the blade and of course we're going to do it on the back side as well we'll start highlighting all of that red using evil sun scarlet now this is a really easy straightforward step all we're going to do is use the side of the brush along those sharp edges to catch those nice crisp highlights where we need to do the feathers such as on the helmet we're just going to take our time and paint the majority of those feathers leaving the darker colors in the recesses now as this dries it will blend down into the model as well which will give you a nice crisp first highlight next up we'll use some wild rider red and we're going to do exactly the same along those sharp edges of the model but we are going to take our time when it comes to those feathers and we're just going to paint the lower part of them so you get a nice crisp line across there make sure you haven't got too much paint on your brush and that you've got a good point and you can start to build up this nice crisp highlight the final highlight we'll use is fire dragon bright we want to use this fairly sparingly we only really want to use it along the sharpest parts those corners of the metallics so we just want to take our time with this make sure we haven't got too much on our brush and use it fairly sparingly across the model mainly on the edges that are going to catch the most light as well as those sharp square edges that we've got on the gun casing We'll move on to painting all of the white next. Now this is going to be fairly bright white and I'm going to do it slightly different from the box art here in terms of the angel on Azrael's chest. But essentially we need to just base all of the white areas using Korax white. Now again I find with a little bit of water that it actually thins down quite nicely and again going over the Zandri dust the coverage is going to be pretty good as well. So there's quite a bit of white to do. There's lots of eagle details. Don't forget the skulls on the backpack as well. So just work your way carefully around the model, painting all of these areas. Once we've done that, we will paint all of the white areas using Soul Blight Grey Shade. Now this is a really good, effective shade for getting a nice, bright, neutral white colour. It's just really important that you give the shade a really good shake. If you've got a Vortex Mixer, use one of them for a good couple of minutes because it does tend to settle at the bottom of the pot. But really all we need to do with this is just paint it over all those white bits and it'll flow really nicely into the recesses. Once that's completely dry, we're going to go in and start to highlight all of the white areas. And the colour I'm using is Bold Titanium White from Procre. You can use whatever white you've got. If you've got White Scar, if you've got AK White. It's just really important that we don't have too much on our brush and that we've got it thin to a fairly decent consistency where it's going to flow nicely. So in terms of what we're doing, we're, again, we're looking to catch the raised detail on the model because this makes it really easy to get a nice crisp highlight. Why we can't do this, we're just being very careful and placing it onto those areas that are going to catch the most light using the shades in the recesses. For all the purity seals, we want something a little more neutral and brighter than the traditional bone and sepia colour because that'll blend into the cloth too much. So we're going to base them using Dawnstone. Again, you can get away with one coat coverage on this because it's going over that Zandri dust. When that's dry, no need to shade them. We'll just take some Administratum Grey and use this to highlight all of those purity seals. So we can do a fairly liberal chunky highlight across these areas because it will stand out nice and bright against the rest of the armor. We'll start to highlight all of the black necks and this is fairly straightforward. We're going to take some Eshin Grey and we're just going to use this along all those sharp edges that we've got of the model. So make sure you've got a decent sized brush, decent point on it as well, but not too much paint so that it floods into other areas accidentally. 
We'll then use Dawnstone, and the aim of getting this Dawnstone highlight on is to get it inside the Ashen Grey highlight. So again, you're looking for an even thinner highlight than you did before. So make sure you've got a really good point on your brush and you haven't got too much paint on there. A really good tip is to drag your brush through the paint as you're taking it off the palette. That'll put the brush into a point, and then just drag it along a paper towel. That'll take off all the excess paint. We'll move on to all of the armor next. So the reason we use the mix is because that's going to be the shade. So what we want to do is take some pure Caliban green and paint this over the majority of the armor, leaving that darker base color in all of the recesses. So just take your time with this, particularly when you come some hard to reach areas where you need to make sure that you don't overly flood the area. So again, we're working across the power armor, the backpack and the banner. I'm just showing you on the Marine itself. The first highlight on all the armor is going to be a mix of Warpstone Glow and Caliban Green 50-50, one to one. And we're just looking to again area highlight the majority of the armor. We don't want to focus too much on the edges yet. We'll do that in the next couple of steps. So work your way around the armor, and this is really going to start to brighten it up. Now, the most Dark Angel armor you see, if you look at the intercessors, the aggressors on the Game Workshop website, they have got very dark green armor, but Azrael himself has got a slightly lighter green. That's what we're going for here. Next, we go for pure warpstone glow, and we're going to use this along all the edges of the armor. So make sure you've got a very good point on your brush, and again, not too much paint. Where we've got those angular parts, we can drag the edge of the brush, so it's really easy to get a nice crisp highlight along here. Where we can't do that, we just need to take our time, but don't worry too much, because if you do make any mistakes, you can always go back over it with the previous color. Finally, on the armor, we'll put the brightest highlight on, and this is going to be with Moot Green. Now, this is very bright in terms of a green color, but don't worry about that too much, because as we work our way around, as it starts to dry, it will blend into the armor a bit more. So it's really important that you use this fairly sparingly. You can always go back in and add more, but just take your time. Again, like we've done throughout this, when it comes to those finicky areas, like around the joints, around the fingers and things like that, just take your time. Make sure you've got a very good point on your brush. And again, I can't emphasize it enough. I've said it all the way through this video. Make sure you haven't got too much paint on your brush. We'll paint the plasma glow next. And the color I'm using for this is Frost Heart. Now I've already painted all of the plasma coils with white paint so if you haven't done that go back and do it and then just simply pop some frost art right over them for that blue effect on the sword this is simply just a case of putting a little bit of frost art down the side of those power nodes so just be very careful with the amount of paint you have on your brush here. you don't want to flood the area because in some instances you're going to be going with a fairly dark metal so this will just make the blue look really dark rather than that bright a live electric effect that we're looking for so just add this on a little bit and just work it up gently so that you get the desired effect the next thing we'll do is make sure that all that xandri dust is the right color so if we've made any mistakes we're just going to take xandri dust from the pot and paint it over and i'm also going to paint all the bones on the skeleton banner here as well so remember when it comes to the banner i've used exactly the same color that i used on the rest of the model so we're going to take that xandri dust and just base all these bones now it's time to paint all of those robes. So the color I'm gonna use is Ushabti Bone, and I'm gonna paint this all over the robes, just leaving that Xandri dust in the recesses. Now this will mean that you'll have quite a harsh transition in some areas. So you have a strip of Xandri dust and a strip of Ushabti Bone. So don't worry about that. I'll show you how to blend all that together next. But in the meantime, we just wanna get a nice solid coat of Ushabti Bone over that Xandri dust, focusing it on the most raised folds of the cloak. I'm also going to use that Ishanti bone to highlight the bone areas on the back banner as well. You don't need a lot of paint on your brush, just take your time and make sure you don't spill it anywhere. So to blend those two colours together on the robes, we're going to do a little bit of wet blending. Now don't worry, this is going to be really easy and straightforward. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint some Ishanti bone down the transition between the Zandri dust and the Ushabti bone. We're then going to clean our brush off, take some Xandri dust, and we're going to brush that into the deepest recesses and work it into that wet Ushabti bone that we've got on the model. Now, if it doesn't work first time, then let it dry and then go back in and do it a second time. By doing this all across all those folds, you'll start to really soften that blend between the two, and you'll get a really nice, effective, soft shadow on a lot of these robes. When you're happy with that, we'll then take some Screaming Skull, which is the brightest bone colour, and we're going to use this to just highlight the sharpest edges, the sharpest raised folds across the cloak. Now, this is going to be more of your traditional highlight style rather than a blended highlight. 
but I think the cloak has got enough straight edges to facilitate this and still look fairly decent. And this will give you that really bright uh, element that catches the eye on the tabletop. To paint Azrael's face, the first thing we're going to do is base the whole thing using Kislev Flesh. So make sure the paint isn't too thick. It should cover fairly well with just one coat. But if you do need a second one, then go in and do that. Next up, we'll wash all of that face area using Reichland Flesh Shade. So you don't want this to flood the area. You just want a little bit on your brush so that as you move it, it'll just pull into those recesses. Azrael's face is a bit strange because you can see it's got lots of surgical marks on it. Uh, which fits into his fluff that he's literally just crossed the Rubicon Primaris. He's just come off the operating table and straight into battle. So just make sure you pick them up with that recess shade. Next, we'll go back to Kislev Flesh and start to highlight the face. So the best thing to do here is to just make sure that we leave the Reichlin Flesh shade in those recesses. Make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. We just want to catch the most raised areas, such as the brow, the nose and the cheekbones. We'll finish highlighting the face with Flayed One Flesh. And again, very similar to what we did with that Kislev flesh, we just want to make sure that we paint it only on the most raised areas. And this will really give us a nice sharp highlight. If you want, you can take a very thin down red wash or something like corn red and paint that into those scars as well, just to kind of enhance the look of the face of the model. The last thing we need to do is finish off that flame on the banner. And this is really easy. The first thing we're going to do is just stipple a little bit of Fire Dragon Bright over that Mephiston Red base. And then once we've done that, we'll stipple a little bit of Uriel Yellow on there as well. And that'll give you a really nice fire effect. The banner plaque that's got Azrael's name on it, that's just done the same way as the bone elements. And there you have it. Azrael is done, ready for the tabletop and ready to lead the Dark Angels from the rock against Vashtor or anyone else foolish enough to set foot on their home planet. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. It's a really complex model, but I've broken it down into nice, simple, easy steps for you. If you like this, make sure you check out my other content and I will see you next time.